May I speak in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Before I start on the sermon, I just want to take a moment to say how happy I am to be back here again, standing in a familiar pulpit uh, in a familiar place and being here with you at Christ Church in Fairfield. And so I was very excited when I got the invitation and it is wonderful to see y'all here tonight and to, to bring a word, to offer a word on this sort of unusual Monday Thursday in 2021 as we are still um, under the pandemic conditions, but I am so glad to be here with y'all tonight. This place has been such a big part of my ministry and my journey, and so it's like coming home tonight. Um, and, you know, that matters, because where we come from, what we remember, what our memories are, make up so much of who we are, right? Mm-hmm. What we remember Laughter, celebrations, heartbreaks, that is what shapes and forms us as we go through our life, right? There are some memories that can make us laugh out loud. Some memories make us cry. There are times that our memories can seem so real that it's like we are back there in that moment. We may maybe smell a particular flower or perfume or hear a song on the radio when we're driving, and all of a sudden we're back there in that moment. And it's not just our individual memories that make up who we are. Our collective memories define what it means to be a family or a community or a nation. It's our shared memories that we agree to hold together that keep us bound to one another. Memories are especially important to people of faith because to be a person of faith is to be a person that remembers. We, as Christians, have received a shared memory from all the Christians that have gone before us and from our Jewish siblings as well. We received a shared memory of God's works and acts of salvation in the world. In a real sense, the scripture that we hear tonight and that we read each time we gather for worship is all those shared memories that were so important we had to write them down and bind them up in a book to make sure that we didn't forget them. To be people of faith is to be a people that remembers. And our remembering isn't just some sort of intellectual exercise. It's even more intense than when you hear that song on the radio that takes you back to that very particular moment. Our remembering as people of faith is enacted through our movement, through our words, through touch and taste and smell and sound. Tonight, Monday, Thursday... Is the beginning of what is the very fancy way of calling the Triduum, the series of worship liturgies that will lead us into Easter. But I think we could actually call these days that we are walking in now the great remembering of the Christian church. It's when we mark Jesus' last hours with his friends, his arrest and betrayal, his crucifixion and death that lead us ultimately to the celebration of Christ's resurrection on Easter And so tonight, we begin a very particular form of remembering as people of faith. Amen. Our reading from Exodus gives us the foundation of what it means to be the people of God holding a shared memory and enacting that in shared worship. You probably remember this story. You may not quite know where we are in Exodus, but we're like at the end of the Ten Commandments movie almost. Or, well, it goes on a little bit. Right before the really exciting scene where Moses gets to divide the Red Sea, right? This is, we have gone through nine plagues, turning water into blood, frogs, gnats, flies, livestock, boils, thunder and hail, locusts and darkness. Egypt has gone through all of that, and Pharaoh has still refused to let the people of God go. And so now comes the ninth plague, which is going to be the death of the firstborn. 
That is where our reading takes place. It's gone. We've had all these dramatic stories of plagues, of Moses coming to Pharaoh and confronting him and Pharaoh refusing to let the people go. But all of that stops in chapter 12 and the story is interrupted by what is essentially a set of liturgical instructions. This is like if you're reading in the Book of Common Prayer, you suddenly get to a whole paragraph of everything in italics that are telling you where you're supposed to stand and what you're supposed to do. But the reason why this story gets interrupted is because God wants to make sure that God's people are ready to remember. Because it's going to be this moment that is about to happen that is going to reset the clock for the people of Israel. This is going to be the time from this time forward. They're going to begin their year with this month and remembering this moment. There are instructions about getting a lamb for every household or sharing one. How that lamb should be cooked and eaten. What should be done with the blood. And to make it clear that what is given here are instructions for ongoing worship. The narrator adds... This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, as a perpetual ordinance, an ongoing act of worship and memory. The story is brought to a stop at this moment because the liturgy that is about to mark this event is marking an event that's going to change the people of Israel forever. This is the moment that will mark God's people as God's own. In the midst of this moment, it is God himself that gives instructions for how the people are to remember it. Ultimately, the people of Israel are instructed to mark and remember their liberation from slavery in Egypt. The plague on the firstborn that strikes at the heart of the Egyptian empire, taking its people, its livestock, and its gods, is a violent moment. But it is not the violence of this final plague that the Israelites are to memorialize. It is they are supposed to remember the trust and hope that it took for them to paint the blood on their on the the doorpost of their house to trust that God would pass over. It's the blood on the house that is assigned to the people, not to God. God knows God's own people. The blood is assigned to the people that they trust that God will act, that God will remember them, that God will protect them. Yes, Lord. To put blood on the doorstep isn't some sort of superstition or hocus pocus. Instead, it is the people of God making a public declaration of who they belong to and that they trust in God's promise to save them. Now, interestingly enough, the lamb is to be cooked simply and eaten the same night. This isn't a fancy meal. This is supposed to be quick. There's no time for the bread to be made with yeast so it can rise. This food is supposed to be ready for, res- ready for them to eat so that they can respond. Every household must have access to a lamb. If they can't afford one, then you've got to share one with them. Everyone needs to eat because this is not a party or a feast. This is a meal to be eaten standing up, dressed, shoes on, staff in hand, ready to go. The people must be ready to respond to God when God acts to liberate them and to bring salvation. It is in this remembrance of trust and hope and liberation. This is the Passover moment for the people of Israel that is brought forward to Jesus' last night with his disciples when they sat following the instructions that had been given in that moment of the Passover, in that liturgical instruction that interrupts the story. That is where Jesus and his disciples are observing the celebration of the Passover in Jerusalem. And we hear the familiar word from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth that Paul received from the Lord what was also handed on to the people in Corinth, right? We see in this moment Paul passing on the shared memory to yet another church. We hear Paul's words of what Jesus did on that night as before he was handed over that makes up our Eucharistic prayer. Jesus on that final night at table with his friends is enacting the memory of the Passover 
But he's also living in to the salvation offered by the incarnation. And so knowing that God is doing something new in that moment, Jesus, just like the writer in Exodus, just like the narrator, interrupts the moment to give liturgical instructions, to take bread and to break it, to share it with those around him. This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The liturgical interruption in the Exodus story helps us to understand why we get a liturgical interruption offered by Jesus. Again, we find the people of God under the oppressive, oppressive control of an earthly empire that is wielding the evil powers of violence and division and exploitation. It is in that world that Jesus comes and offers his body and blood as the food of liberation and the drink of trust and hope to God's people to be saved. Throughout his earthly ministry, Jesus has confronted the powers of sin in this world, whether it is sinful behavior of the individual or demons or the oppressive system of Rome. When we make Jesus, we make Jesus too small if we limit what he was doing in for the first century to just being a social justice activist, but we make God's saving act of liberation too small if we live it to limit it to some sort of small individual personal salvation. Christ came as our Passover and is sacrificed for us. And so therefore, it is through Jesus Christ that we are saved. It is through Jesus Christ we are reconciled to God. It is through Jesus Christ that the power of death is destroyed. And through Christ that we are called into a community of the church, a community built on Christ's radical love. And it is from this community that we are sent out into the world in trust and hope to bring salvation and liberation to the world through Christ's radical love. And so that we can remember God's act of salvation and God's act of liberation, Jesus gives us words to say, bread and wine to taste and touch, and a community that will remember this moment and gather again and again to offer thanks. And the gift of the Eucharist, and the gift of Holy Communion, Jesus invites us to remember the way God remembers the world. It's a remembering that recalls the past, such as the exodus from Egypt and the Last Supper with the disciples, but brings it into the present moment to those of us that are gathered here in Fairfield, but to also in that same moment remember the future feast and the fullness of the kingdom of God at that heavenly banquet that we are all called to where we will be reunited and reconciled to God. It is our shared memory that is held together in the Eucharist that manages to bend time and space to create this powerful moment where we are remembered and remembered again as the body of Christ knit together by the waters of baptism and made siblings through Christ's blood. I don't know about you, but after this year, After this year, after everything that has happened with pandemic and with violence and with protest and with civil division, after this year, I need some trust and hope and I need to remember who I am and where I come from. I need to remember that the liberation that came to the people of Israel during so long ago came during a plague of darkness, not in the light. Mm. I need to remember that liberation is hard and dangerous work and that we need to be ready to move when the time comes. I need to be reminded that liberation isn't just limited to those that can afford it, but the people of God must share so that everybody is ready to go when the time comes. I need to remember that resurrection 
came from the darkness of the tomb. And I need to remember that salvation comes from the mystery of the cross. I need to remember that the mystery of the Eucharist reveals the reality of God who is bigger than me and this place and this church and this country and this world. And it is that God that offers us salvation. Amen. As a community of remembering, we are not just here to make ourselves more comfortable. But we are here to get the strength to go out into the world. It is through the mystery of memory and the power of grace that we come to this place to meet Jesus. Amen. It is through Christ's offering, the food and drink for our liberation, that we can eat and drink and be ready to go. It is through Christ's offering of food and drink that our salvation is given, that we can also receive it and go out and trust and hope. We are a community that remembers. And tonight, what we do here, we do in remembrance of Jesus, our Savior, because Christ, our Passover, is once and finally sacrificed for us. So therefore, let us keep the feast. Amen. Amen. Amen.